What's up, guys? Zach Reininger, and today we are doing a an RV State of the Union. Now, I don't have my shirt and tie. I don't have a big dais with a bunch of people around all arguing and yelling at me. I let you guys do that from afar away. But today we're going to talk about a bunch of different things. This might be a little bit of a longer video, maybe 15, 16 minutes. Um, but there's going to be a lot of points in here. And I think if you could take some time to digest some of what's out there, we're going to cover all the stats. We're going to cover, you know, year end 2022, what the market's doing, the direction it's going, what the forecasts are, um, some of my interpretation of what that says and kind of where we're feeling things going. And, um, you know, I think there's some other interesting stuff. There's been some closures out there of other manufacturers, and I want to talk about those and what it means. And then just we'll wrap it up just kind of with an overall summary of what's really happening out there. There's a lot of, um, especially if you get on like YouTube, there's just so many things out there like the world is ending, RVs are over, blah, 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 blah. Let's dive in. Let's get to the bottom of this. Let's see what is really going on. And what we're going to do is I've got a, a couple tabs over here. We've done videos like this before. So you'll see me jump over to another window and I'm going to run through all the different stats and stuff with you guys so that you can see what's going on out there. So you're not just hearing it from other people. Let's look at the data. Let's form an opinion and let's adjust and move accordingly. Let's go. Okay. So jumping in, we are going to look at and get my little monitor going. All right, guys, this is 2022 retail sales total. So we have the data through December, through the end of the year. Now, what we're looking at here is obviously it's down almost 22%. But check out this. It's down 22% from the best year ever. 2021 was the best year ever. So when we look at some of these numbers, they, they may feel a little dramatic to some of you. Um, but it, you have to remember the, the frame of reference that we're using, what we're comparing it to. So 22% feels like a lot, but it was COVID guys. Like, I mean, it's uh, and I hope they don't ban my video for saying that word, but look at this total shipments. So again, this is retail sales. This is what's selling on the dealer's lots for all of North America, including Canada. This is what we're shipping as manufacturers. Now, the big, the big red flag here is this. That is a difference of 45,000, almost 46,000 units of meaning. The RV industry produced almost 46,000 more units than were sold in 2022. Now, the majority of you know on your lots, it feels like there's too much stuff there, right? So that's where this is coming from. It's, it's, it's the overproduction on our side. We could, we didn't slow down fast enough on the manufacturing side, even though we hit the brakes really hard. Um, we didn't slow down fast enough in order to, to accommodate the demand fall off that we saw once, you know, tanks started rolling in Ukraine and things like that. So we're going to dive into that. And we're going to kind of show you guys that. So I wanted to show you that's where we're at. We're down 21%. And we've done a couple other videos where we figured that's roughly about where we would end up. But again, this is with Canada. And now we're going to jump over. We're going to look at shipments. Shipments were the third best year on record. So meaning the stuff that we built as manufacturers was the third best year on record. Well, if this is the sixth best year in retails and this is the third best year, there's a discrepancy, right? Well, we need to see this number dramatically fall. And so what we're looking at here is total RV shipments for 2022 decreased almost 18%. Okay. Tollables were down 20%. What you're seeing though is, let's jump here and I wanna show you this. Let's look at December. This is I think like the third month in a row of a 50% decline. Towable RVs down 55% in December production shipments. So if retails are down 20%, let's look at December here retails. December retails were down 30% but shipments were down almost 55%. That is a positive, guys. What this means is that the, the industry is healing. It is gonna get back to normal. The level of retails versus shipments. I want you to look at this right here too. This is a graph and this is showing us the blue lines are 2021, the gold lines are 2022. These are shipments. This is what manufacturers sent to the dealers. Look at this first half of the year through June. 
Look at the staggering number of shipments we had. March, we shipped almost 65,000 units out to dealers' lots. So you can see if, you, if you're if you ever into finance or everything, you know, when they plot lines um, for charts, they draw lines. And you can look at this descending line, just all the way down, just crashes all the way down. So what we're seeing is this is where everybody started to hit the brakes. We were still running in June, July. Look at these numbers. We just pulled back so hard this November down to 19,000 in December. So I personally think that we'll continue to see this trend going down um, into Q1. So when we start getting January, February numbers here, these numbers are still going to be deflated. So what that means is, is that as our as the retail sales normalize and, and, and the seasonality of it is you know, we're going to see retail start to trick up, trickle up because we're getting into season. So you're going to see a separation that's going to widen, in my opinion. So if the retail sales for the year were down 22% and the second half of the year we were down 40 to 50 in production, we're going to continue to see that separate further and further. So that means dealer inventories are going to get healthier and healthier as manufacturers keep the brakes on for a while until this normalizes. Um, I what I want to show you also is we're going to jump over and I'm going to show you this chart here, if I can get this to work. Okay, so what we're looking at here, now this is US based. So the other numbers that we were looking at were uh, including all of North America, so Canada as well. This is US based and what we're seeing, it's kind of, we've done other videos on this guys, remember, so this is year to date. This is through the end of the year. This is all 2022. All recreational vehicles, this is all towables, no motorhomes in here, down 23.1%, okay? Um, you can see that it, it kind of bounced all around that, but it averaged out almost all year long. Let's jump down and look at travel trailers. Travel trailers down about 22%. Um, the, the, the trend is pretty consistent. Fifth wheels down almost 30%. I think this number on fifth wheels as it keeps going is gonna get a little higher. You know, you can see fourth quarter here, almost 34%. Third quarter was 32%, 35% here. Q1 was really pretty good still for fifth wheel. So what you're seeing is, is that it helped balance them out. I think this number is going to start looking more probably like the 35% down um, as it continues on here for the next couple months. So fifth wheels, still a little bit of a struggle out there. Uh, camping trailers, so pop-ups, only down 13%. Uh, not not bad, not bad at all. You can see it kind of normalized in third and fourth quarter here. Um, I'm seeing a lot of traction on this in my in my brand in particular. So this segment is still really strong. Um, I say really strong. I mean the, the numbers aren't massive, but there's a ton of interest here, and it's being really resilient. So we're gonna jump back over here, and let's let's come back to me. You guys miss me. So what all these numbers are telling us is is that the market is still pretty good. Um, shows have been really strong. The attendance has been, if not record setting, uh, very close to records. So we're seeing a ton of interest there. I think the, the sales will continue to increase and I imagine we'll probably end up somewhere in the, well, let's go over and look at some numbers. Sorry. I'm jumping all over. You guys, you know, I'm ADD. Sorry. It's ADHD today. All these young kids. I was, I'm an old schooler. ADD. Let's look over here. So this year we're at 447 um 418 was 2016 i'm guessing we end up somewhere around probably probably the same number maybe 425 this year um which would still make it one of the top years ever right when we look at these numbers now when we come over here we're going to look at this this is this is a forecast put out by the RVIA and what they're forecasting for shipments is, again, shipments being what we send to dealers. They're, they're forecasting a range of 379 to 403, probably ending up at about 391,000 units. So they're saying that would be really close to 2019 numbers. Now, if we come over here, here's the shipments. Here's 2019, 406. Here's where we ended up this year, 493. My personal opinion is, I think based on where manufacturers are, um, how hard everybody's hit the brakes and their hesitancy to ramp up production, 
I think we end up more on our side around here. You know, they're forecasting here. I don't think so. I would say one of these two numbers is more likely. Uh, I think dealers are going to be much more um, particular in what they bring back in in stock. And I think that manufacturers are going to be hesitant to go too hard, too fast on production. And it's going to end up creating a little bit of an imbalance out in that market. So if we end up, you know, in the 425-ish range for retails, but we only build 350-ish from manufacturers, we're back into another imbalance there. I think that's a very real possibility that I think we'll pull back a little too hard for the market, but that would actually be a good thing. Give dealers a breathing room, let inventories get healthy and normalize going into fall, and then we can all reset and get back to a normal type of year. So that's my thinking on the forecast that they have going here. I think that they're a little bit uh, optimistic based on what people are going to be producing. So that's all positive in my opinion. I think we're the, the numbers show, I mean, we're still going to be like top five years, top 10 years in the RV industry as a whole. Dealers are normalizing inventory. Manufacturers have pulled back. It's going to get healthy out there, which will take some of the weird pressure that's out there of the wrong inventory on the ground at the wrong time of year that customers don't want. And it allows dealers to get the right inventory on the ground that customers do want so that we can sell more. So that's, it's all part of the process here, right? You know, it's reaching equilibrium again. Um, like I said, those shows have been really good. Um, Tampa turned out great, great attendance. Hershey just missed the record. Um, so all the big shows are going really well. Um, and I think, you know, in my opinion, interest in our industry has never been higher. And I've talked a lot about this on this channel that, you know, just because we're in a weird year and it's been a hiccup and things are readjusting back to normal, don't panic. Don't freak out. There is so much positivity in our industry, guys, that you you cannot you, you can't not be bullish about the direction we're going. And I want to show you another report. Again, this is about data on this video and a little bit of opinion from me. Um, but that's why you're here, right? So I'm going to show you this other report, and this is another one from RVIA where they did a bunch of surveys about interest in our industry. And this, this aligns with a lot of stuff that we've been talking about and the demographics and how it's lining up for our industry to continue to grow for the next 10, 20, 30 years. It's, it's incredibly exciting to me. So let's jump over here. I'll show you this information. So they're saying they took a survey of, that found about 30, whatever. The survey basically represents roughly 67 million people planning to take an RV trip this year. That's a lot of people, guys. Whether they're renting one from friends, RVshare.com, buying one, whatever it is. Now, let's look at this. This is one that I've harped on a lot. Look at the cost savings when they look at this. RV vacations cost 50% less than comparable hotel and plane ride trips and a third less than hotel and car ride trips, making an attractive option for people looking for the freedom to travel while also controlling their expenses. Now, I'm going to jump out of this real quick and tell you something. Last time I posted some of this, a lot of people jumped into my comments out there and were saying things about, oh, RVing's not cheap, blah, 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 blah. Listen, guys, nobody ever said a vacation is cheap, Right? It's not about being cheap. It's about an experience and it's about what you want to go do. What I did say is, and what this study shows, that it's more affordable than other forms of vacationing. So the people that want to get all hyped up and say, well, I've got to, you know, I got to pay for my RV and blah, 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 and do all this. Like they're, they're not seeing the point. Just because you had to pay for it doesn't mean that it doesn't cost less and give you more freedom than doing any other type of vacation out there. So if people jump out at you when you share this information, it's like, well, nobody ever said it was free, guys, okay? But it's the best damn money you can spend for you and your family, right? All right, now that I cleared that up, let's jump over here again. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting for, for demographics. They say, however, the highest interest in RVing overall comes from the younger age groups. 49% of Gen Z and 48% of millennials plan to take an RV trip in the next year. Their purchase intent is also higher with 41% of Gen Z and 35% of millennials planning to buy an RV next year. Among RVers, which is defined as people who have taken a trip in an RV they rent, own, or borrow in the last year, 50% plan to buy an RV in the next year. And this is up 14% from last year. So that's, it's up from COVID. It's up from COVID. 
So 50% of the people that have done RVing are wanting to buy in the next year. Now, granted, you know, I don't know how qualified some of these people are, right? Like there's, there's a lot of things that people could poke holes in some of this, but the interest is there. The demographics are working in our favor. The number of Gen Z, I was reading about this the other day, Gen Z people that are like, you think millennials are into RVs? The Gen Z generation is like really into this. So we have baby boomers, millennials, the two largest generations in the history of our country, by the way, and then Gen Z all converging at the same time, interested in what we offer. Think about That's incredible, right? Like the, the demographics are working in our favor. It's amazing. So not to mention just the cost. I mean, if you've gone out there to try and rent a hotel room or rent a car or take a flight, like it's absurd, right? So that's a big deal. The demographics are working in our favor. Very positive information there. Um, now let's jump into one of the objections we hear about, you know, as people think about the costs of it. Well, let's look at gas prices. So our average gas price today is current average is 343. A year ago, 346. So diesel's up a little bit. Where's diesel at? Where's my diesel? Sorry, diesel's down. Guys, look at that. Down from a year ago. Or I'm sorry, up. Shit. Reading this chart wrong. So diesel is up still. Gas is basically the same. So your, your cost for gas is going to be the same. So that eliminates that objection. That was a, an ouchy feeling at a lot of times. So everything last year when it kind of hit the brakes a little bit for us was, you know, the, the invasion of Ukraine, interest rates started rising, gas went through the roof because, you know, all the scarcity mindset in the world about oil and gas and Ukraine and what's going on. Um, so that all has come full circle. We're now gas is right back where it was. Diesel's still up a little bit. Um, but that's, that's a positive. Now, Interest rates, interest, everybody knows interest rates. They're still going up. The Fed continues to rise. They're trying to fight the inflation that maybe they created. Uh, sorry, I will stop right there. The deal is this, and it's all in how we talk to our customers. There's a really unique window right now for these customers where they can actually, they can actually score some deals. There's a big difference. So a lot of them are getting hung up on the interest rate side, but the, the bigger picture is, you're buying for much less money today than you were a year ago, okay? So the deals are there. When you look at the math, and I'll, I'll try and post a video for you guys. Uh, our Alan Warren, the RV wingman, did a video on this, and he broke down payment structure of, you know, last year's interest rate at like 5.5% versus 9.5%, but the price you paid last year versus the price you pay today, and the payment is less today even with higher interest rate. And that's something that I, I did a video on recently too of, you know, you have to overcome the interest rate objection by educating the customer. It's easy to get emotional about, well, I don't want to pay 9%. I don't want to pay 9%. Okay. Do you want to pay 9% or do you want to pay 5% but pay 10 grand more, 15 grand more, $20,000 more? Because the price, you pay the price once. The, the cost is your interest rate that you can refinance that one. So the price up front is more important right now. And right now there are deals for these customers. There's 2022 inventory in the field. Customers can get deals. And if the Fed ends up backing down and coming back, you can refinance. You can go to your credit union and get a lower rate. You can do all these different things. You can pay it off earlier, but you can only negotiate the price one time. You don't get to lower your price that you paid. So educate those people that just because rates are a little bit higher, doesn't mean that their payment's higher and it doesn't mean that they're not getting a better deal today. So keep that in mind for a lot of customers. It's not, it's not all doom and gloom like a lot of them feel like when they think about the interest rate thing. And a lot of us think that too. So don't let it get into your head that the interest rates are stopping people from buying. No, what's stopping people from buying is we're not presenting the deal correctly. We're not talking to them about the numbers. We're not walking them through it, looking at what really matters, finding out their hot button. You know, what is it? Is it payment? Is it price? Is it unit? Is it floor plan? We're missing something if they're balking at the, pay, at the interest rate side of it. We're missing something in the deal. Okay, so let's get on to a little bit of gossip in the industry. Not even gossip, I guess it's news. And what this is, is one of the manufacturers out there is closing up shop. That might be a little bit of a summary for you, but let's look over here. So Tiffin, the RV manufacturer, owned by Thor, 
is closing Van Lee RV. So they started uh, Van Lee, which was their big fifth wheel, like customized type fifth wheels, I think in 2016, 14, 2014. So Lee Tiffin, who runs Tiffin Group. So they're going to close down that fifth wheel group and they're going to focus on motorized because that's their bread and butter. That's what they do best. Now, hats off to these guys. One thing they did is they are going to transfer all warranty customer support to the Tiffin facilities. So anybody that did buy one of these, owns one, or is buying one that's still in the field, still gets warranty coverage. They're still going to take care of them, which at the end of the day, guys, that's the most important thing in our industry is just taking care of these people, right? Like that, that's how we keep them in our family and that's how they're going to keep coming back and enjoying the lifestyle. So they're hats off to them of doing a good job by their customers. Now, some people are, I've seen some YouTube videos out there jumping out and thinking like, oh, here it goes. Here's the, here's the beginning of the end. And I don't think so. I think what you're seeing is the consolidation to the point of what they're doing is they're leveraging back to what they do best. They're going to focus on the motors. That's what they do best. That's what they've always done best. And so they're going to go back to that, go back to their roots and focus on it. And I'm going to say right now, this is not going to be the last one. I think we see multiple other brands that have either done expansion into different segments that they've never normally been into, um, adding extra little lines here and there. I think we're going to see a pullback on some of that. I wouldn't be shocked if we see certain brands get just shut off and gone. Um, I'm not saying people are going out of business. What I'm saying is I think the industry was growing and growing and growing. And then the last few years allowed everyone to grow at a pace that wasn't sustainable. And those brands were not great brands and they're going to fall to the wayside. And I think it's actually a smart business decision by them to focus on their core and what they're doing. I know there's some dealers that are affected by this. Um, there's some customers that love that product and they're going to be affected by it. But I don't think this is the last one. I think you'll see other brands pull back and uh, maybe cut out certain lines underneath them. Maybe they had a, a higher line one that they're going to pull back on. Um, so this probably won't be the last one, but this is healthy. This is good for the industry. This is them recognizing that their fit wasn't right. And so that's what's going to be key. I think we're going to see more and more of this as dealers get more and more selective of what they want to stock and sell. And there, there's going to be a lot of this, I think. So that, I, I tip my hat to those guys. I think they did it right. I don't know if you've seen the video that Lee Tiffin put out about this. Um, I admire the fact that he put himself out there and did that video and owned it himself. Man's a leader. I liked it. I saw it. Lee, hat tip to you. Um, that's it, guys. That's the big one. And now we're going to summarize kind of what's going on. And I'll make this as brief as I can because I said 15 to 16 minutes, and here we are at 23 minutes. Uh, your boy is good at this. Yakking. Um, overall, guys, the market's getting healthier. Sales are picking up. People are interested. There are more people than ever that want to do what we offer. And... I will continue to harp on this, that the better care we can take of those customers and curate because they might not buy today. They might not buy tomorrow. They might not buy next month, but they're going to buy. And the people that can play the long game and think about that are going to be the ones that win over the next 12, 18, 24, 36 months, all the way up into the next 12 years. So try and keep that in mind when, you, when you're visiting with these customers is just always try to be there and take care of them because they'll remember it. And then I also want to remind you that I, I think it's going to be a pretty good year for dealers. I think that sales are going to, it's, it's already starting to shape up. I'm cautiously optimistic. There's a lot of things that can still happen. We don't know what the hell, you know, crazy uncle Vlad's going to do. There's a lot of black swan events that could happen, right? So I'm not getting ahead of us on this. I'm cautiously optimistic, but the things are falling into place right now where it looks like it's still going to be a really good year, but not for manufacturers. I've been saying this for seven months, eight months now, that I said it was going to be a long, dark, cold winter for manufacturing. And I think that continues to be the trend. I think you're seeing it. I think that it's going to be a, a, a winter that carries on into spring for a lot of brands as dealers normalize their inventory. And then when they normalize, they're going to be more selective in what they bring in. So it's going to continue to be a little bit more challenging on the manufacturing side than it will be on the retail side. You saw those numbers early on. The discrepancy was there. We were producing too much. It needs to happen. We got to pull it back. 
too many too many units in the field. So I think it's going to be good for retail. I think some manufacturers are going to do great. I think some manufacturers are going to continue to hurt for the rest of the year. And I think a lot of them are going to struggle until probably mid to late summer. Um, I'm not saying people are going out of business. I'm just saying they're going to struggle to fill their plants. So that is what I foresee for the year. I think retail will be good. Um, I think that the best manufacturers will win. I think the best dealers will win. And I think the best salespeople will win. So if you want to be in that group, if you want to do better, let me know how I can help. Let me know if you want connections to some of the best trainers in the world. Let me know if you want to work through objections, how to help customers, ideas for your dealership, marketing, YouTube and social media. Like I, if, if I don't know something, I probably know somebody who's best in class in some of that stuff. And so I can help you. Let me help you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I really appreciate you. If you have questions, if you have comments on the video or you want to know more information, post some comments below. Send me a message. I'll shoot whatever content I can to help help help, help you guys, if that makes sense. You guys have a great day. Love you.